Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another one verse one cast in StarCraft 2, brought to you by Acelian. I'm going to be showing you a game between Binsky and EXO. Now, Binsky, being pretty pretty mannered, giving his opponent just that little heads up. Ha! Apparently, this map was picked by EXO. And this is a, a game from the Texas Esports Association. <laughs> little chatter between the two. Uh, from the Texas Esports Association's third tournament held in October 2011. This has uh, this is part of a best of three series. I am not casting the other two. I'm just picking some games that I thought were good, uh, that that looked pretty good from what I could remember, that were recommended to me by Binsky, who I've been speaking to recently. <laughs> and a little bit of chatter between the two. There was actually a uh, a game early on where where there was some heavy heavy racks played between uh, a Terran and a Protoss elsewhere in the tournament. Now a little bit of chat about these players in case you missed the other game with Binsky. He is currently ranked 82nd North American GM at the time of this cast. He also plays on the Korean server in Masters. He's planning on going uh, pro StarCraft 2, really pushing it and, and just going the whole nine yards. And I've speak, spoken to him personally. He actually used my computer at this tournament. In fact, this game was played on my computer. I feel all fancy saying that. Yeah, you know, just had a Grandmaster guy use my computer. No big deal. You know, just just kind of cool. I'm, I'm sort of famous like that. <laughs> he was nice enough to, to let me cast this, let me have the game show him off a little bit. Binsky is actually very, very well-mannered. He's a very, very nice young gentleman, and I really think that he can go places. I watched him play. He's exceptional, as you have to be to reach Grand Masters on any region and stay in the uh, Masters in Korean. He's very humble as well, constantly talking about, you know, I'm not that great. I'm, I mean, I, I'm okay. I'm sitting here going, dude, you just pulled some amazing stuff in the last game. He's like, yeah, I could have done better. Now, EXO, not to talk him down, currently ranked 69th in the overall North American Masters. Uh, when you get out of Grand Masters, you do break into divisions. So the uh, Masters is broken into a few divisions, and in his own division, EXO, or I'll just call him EXO, is ranked second. So he is really up there in terms of some great Masters play. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not even close to Masters. It is, it is just, it is hard, man. These guys are just good. So this is from a tournament, even though it is red versus blue, this is not a ladder game. Binsky going for a one Rax, no gas expand, a little commonplace for him, especially against Protoss. He tends to go into a very heavy bio play, which, uh, you know, favors a little bit of a late gas because you can, you don't need gas to throw down these two extra barracks to get this orbital command to push out these marines. Sure, you're not getting your upgrades right away. But you are getting a pretty sizable force that can hold its own. This you can also throw down bunkers as well. So some great static D to hold early defenses against silly rushes. Now uh, the Nexus has gone down for Exo. He is going double gas. Speaking more up, a little bit of a supply block. Probably why that pylon was warped in or warping in. And Exo, Double Gas speaks a little bit more of tech. He did a one gate expand with two gas. A little peculiar, not always uh, the norm. And he's going into a three gate, so he might be going up into a, a blink stalker play. He could go into a four or five gate off of two base with a blink stalker upgrade push. I've actually been seeing that a whole lot recently. And it it's not just the only thing he can go into. He could also go into Hallucination, that as well. Now we know why he's getting all this gas. He wants to build up so he can get in plenty of sentries. There's our first one down. And now more will be warping in. Just as I say that, sure enough. Exo making me look good. Making me seem smarter than I am. Probe transfer going down. And both players really just kind of gearing up. Neither one going for any surly early play. Neither going for, for major cheese or anything of the sort. Vinsky going right for Stimpak as well. 
in just that hallucination finishes. It's very, very quickly. We've got the plus one armor coming out. So we're going to see probably a, a heavyish century zealot play, not unlike what we saw in the other Binsky vs. A Protoss game. I won't spoil it. I won't say who. Maybe it's Huck. Maybe it's not because he wasn't at the tournament. But you get the idea. Have fun. See the other game. It's good. We have the Phoenix hallucinated heading out, trying to get some expanding going. It is rallied right up to go through. It just to see what it can see, that's that's all it's going to do. It's just going to be like, well, scouting time. And really it's great because it doesn't cost you anything more than energy. When you're warping in a fair number of sentries, you're more than happy to get that free energy out of the way. Now a couple of salvages coming from these bunkers right away. That was a very quick maneuver, which tells me it was planned. Binsky is ready to move out. He has his plus one on the way. That's going to take 160 seconds to finish, so certainly he won't be finishing with the timing there. But he is getting his stim and combat shields at the same time. This is a practiced play by Binsky. He knows his build. Watchtower is going to spot this, and concussive shells does start as well. Now it's only 60 seconds out. However, the shot from the Marauder right there with the probe living says that he doesn't have it yet. His Protoss opponent might be feeling pretty confident about this. And indeed, Binsky is just going to pull back, saying, all right, let's get some music going. There we go. Poor little probe out here. Has all his shields back, but low health. One little sneeze on him, and he is dead. Now, continuing to hallucinate these Phoenix, eating up a bit of the energy. He'll have probably enough for force fields. I mean, if we, if we look over, you know... 82, 67, 40, 59, 150, and 150. Still a fair number of force fields ready to be dropped against this by army. Charge is actually about to finish. I completely even missed the Twilight Temp uh, Council going down. And the Protoss Grind Armor 2 is on the way. So this is looking to be fairly standard on both ends. Another moving up to of Charge Lot into Archon. This is actually not the same person. I know people who watch the other game are like, wait a second, this looks familiar. Spoiler alert, the other guy in the other game tends to go a similar build. Not the exact same, but similar. Robotics Bay also going down somewhere. If I could... Uh, nope, those are assimilators. I'm just right in front of... It's always right in front of my face. Highland to get warped in here, and Binsky knowing... Wait a second, why is this probe here? Going to be picking off this proxy. Could have allowed for some sneaky warp-ins, but... No luck. No such luck. This probe probably going to drop down a Nexus, it looks like. Getting ready to take his third, and I was going to say attack behind it, but he decides not to. That second armor, getting ready to finish. Now the Warp Prism is coming out here for Exo. Excuse me, I am taking my drink. Robotics Bay going down, and here's the thing. Because, I mean, most people would say, oh, Robotics Day, also known as Colossus Den, haha, -ha, because they're just used for Colossus. No, since he's getting this Warp Prism, there is a fair decent chance that he will actually be going into Warp Prism kind of speed to really assist with his drops. And the second armor is finishing. We do have Archons coming out. Lots of Zealots with this group. We have total on the field. 19 Zealots. In fact, I would have... I would have liked to have seen him hallucinate a couple of more Archons just to make that force seem all the more beastly than it is. And Binsky, who does love his drop play, unfortunately the hallucinated Phoenix is going to spot this. The army is still going to be caught out of position. This drop group is going to cause a lot of damage. Especially given what can be warped in. And this group just says, you know what? Nah, no, nah, we're just going to head out. See ya. Meanwhile, back in the main for Exo, Gateway gets taken down. Pylon gets taken down. Robotics Bay is unpowered. Now supply blocked. He could probably go for this pylon as well and shut down a couple of production facilities. No, these two here helping out a whole ton. Probes are pulled. Archon is warped in. Fortunately, the Twilight Council will not allow, or the destruction of it won't be anything major. However, he does get the Robotics Supply Bay, which means that if any Colossus were in the plans to be made, not going to be the case here. 
They get swooped up into the medevac, and he's just going to use the buildings to kite the Archon all the way around. And then head out on his merry way, or at least he should, but he's choosing not to. He's going to try to go for it against this Archon. I don't think he can do that.